Here's, here's the thing for every Christian. You cannot be a Christian and say nobody loves you. you. You can't say that. You can't be a Christian. You can't be a Christian. Now, you can be an unbeliever and you can say nobody loves you, but you can't be a Christian and say that nobody loves you because in order to be saved, you have to accept that somebody loves you. If you're not willing to accept that somebody loves you, then we can't baptize you. You can't be saved. You have to accept that out of all the people in the world, there is at least one person who loves you, and that's the Father. The Father loved you so much that he gave his what? His only son, and the reason why the Father loves the son is because the son volunteered. Father, I know how much you love them, so I'll give my life to get their record clean, right? So you have to be willing to accept love. You can't walk around and act like nobody loves you and nobody cares you. You can't be a Christian and say those words. Nobody cares about me, nobody loves me, nobody supports me. You can't say that because what's the cross? Every time that you look at the cross, if you're about to say it, look at the cross and you say, you know what, I can't make those statements because he gave his what? He gave his life on the cross for you. So the Bible says the father loves the son because the son was able to manifest the love of God by dying on the cross. So I want you to look at the next verse. And I want you to look at verse 18. So I want to make this very clear about Jesus Christ. No man what? No man takes it. So here's, here's what I understand about the cross. With Jesus, it wasn't a murder. It, it wasn't a murder. Now, when somebody gets murdered, if somebody gets murdered, that means somebody did something to another person. And then you can accuse that person, right? You can accuse that person of being guilty. When Jesus died, there was nobody that you can point to that could say, I killed Jesus. Nobody killed Jesus. Now, he did die. Jesus died, but nobody killed him. No man killed him. Somebody says, well, 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 well brother, I read, or maybe you saw the movie, uh, I, I read and I was studying, I, I heard that they beat him. Yes, they beat him. They spit on him. They tortured him and they crucified him. The word crucify, it is a torture. They tortured him. But nobody what? It wasn't a murder. It wasn't a murder. So notice how Jesus is talking before the crucifixion. Jesus says, no man, what? No man takes it from me. Nobody can take my life. Nobody can kill me. That's what Jesus said. Nobody can kill me. So in order for me to die for your sins, I got to just let it go. I, I got I to gotta yield. So the Bible says, no man takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. This is in order for your salvation to be based on love. Jesus said, I'm going to show my love, not because somebody took it from me. Because if somebody killed Jesus, if somebody killed Jesus, you could say, well, Jesus really didn't die for our sins. Somebody just murdered him and he died accidentally. Jesus didn't die accidentally. It wasn't an accident and it wasn't because of the anger of somebody that they killed him. The Bible says when they came to Jesus, he was dead already. He gave. Right. He gave his life. So the Bible says he says, I have power to do what? I have power to lay it down, and I have power to what? Now, here's how this is connected to the gospel. In order for you to become a Christian, nobody can force you to die. What is the gospel? The gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, which means in order for you to become a Christian, you have to voluntarily die, be buried, and then rise out of the newness of water. You, you have to volunteer. Nobody, uh, that's, that's why uh, when, when, uh, in Catholicism, Catholicism, they baptize babies. They're forced. 
The baby don't know what the, the baby want to be left alone. Somebody took the pacifier, dressed the baby off, and then they pour on water on the baby, and the baby don't know what the, the, don't remember. And then when the baby gets older, somebody has to tell the baby, this is what we did to you. Jesus says, nobody did it to me. I made the decision, and I laid it down. Now, if you want to be a Christian, and if you want to follow after Christ, you're going to have to do the same thing that Christ did. You're going to have to voluntarily, on your own, walk down the aisle and get baptized by yourself. Nobody can force you, push you, or make you be saved, or then it's not salvation. And it's not based on love. Do y'all see the correlation? Y'all see the connection? So he says, I, I lay it down. I lay it down of myself. And then he says, I have power. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it again. And then it says this at the end of the verse. This commandment have I what? It wasn't a suggestion. It was a commandment. The power would be in Jesus. It was a command. Nobody was going to make Jesus do anything. What Jesus did on the cross, even the Father didn't make him. He did it because he was obedient. But nobody made him do anything. So I want to make it very clear. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't a murder. He voluntarily gave his life. Jesus yelled with all that was, he's on the cross. He has nails in his hands. He has nails in his feet. The Bible says he cried out with a loud voice. And then he what? He yielded up. Some other translations say he what? He gave. He gave up the ghost. He yielded up the ghost. Uh, does anybody know what yield means? Uh, some of you don't know what yield means because I've seen some of you drive uh, on, <laughs> on the feeder. Uh, when people are coming off the highway, somebody may have not told you this, when people are coming off the highway, they have the right of way. They have the right of way. If you're on the feeder, uh, there's a little yellow sign. It, there's a, ye a yellow sign. It says, it says yield. What's the difference between a yield sign and a stop sign? Uh, they will give you a ticket. I know this for a fact. They will give you... <laughs> uh, I had one police officer talking, talking about a, a California... What do they call it? A California roll? A California roll? I said, I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't been to California like that. Uh, I, I, I believe I stopped, uh, but I, I, I paid the ticket. But um, a stop sign is by law, you have to stop. And if you don't stop, they ticket you. The difference between a yield sign, it's based on you. It's, you have to watch. And it's, and it's based upon your vision, which is why it's dangerous. It's based upon your vision. It's based upon your awareness. If you don't see anybody coming, you can just keep on going on. But if you see somebody coming, what they're saying is there's somebody that takes precedent or that's more important than the road that you're on. So the road that you're on is not saying it's not important, but there is somebody else that that you need to yield to and pay attention to. As Jesus was going on, he could have minded his own business, but he saw you coming. And when Jesus saw you coming, he yielded to you and he gave up his life. He didn't have to. Nobody was going to take his life. Nobody could kill Jesus. But he said, you know what? I see you and I'm going to put you ahead of me. So I'm going to yield and put your life ahead of my life and I'm going to die for you. The Bible says he yielded up his life. He yielded up the ghost. So when he was on the cross, the Bible says he just let it go. They had beat him to a bloody pulp. They had scarred him. They had stabbed him. They, uh, uh, with, the, with the thorns in his head, uh, they had tortured him. It was enough to kill, but he let it go. The Bible says it is in baptism. We are buried with him in baptism. So I want to make this very clear. The first time you spiritually connect with Jesus Christ 
is when you have accepted love, you have believed in what he has done for you, and you voluntarily, I want to make this very clear and I want to push this point. If anybody was ever forced in the baptism, that's not the way Jesus wanted you to come. How would you, how would you feel? Uh, how would you feel if you were having a birthday party and you found out that all the guests were forced to come? How would, how would you feel? Matter of fact, you can tell the look on their faces. They didn't want to be here. They had to, they had to show up. How would, you, how would you feel if on your wedding day you found out that your spouse, your future spouse, was told to marry you by gunpoint. It don't feel the same. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it don't, it's not as warm and gushy. Why would, G, why would God want you to be forced to come to worship? I don't want to have to make you read your Bible. You don't want to pray to me? How do, you, how do you feel uh, when somebody entertains? Have anybody ever been entertained before? You ever had somebody entertain you? They act like they, but they really was just entertaining you? No, you can go home. You ain't got to entertain me. I play by myself. I got my own toys. I don't need to be entertained. I don't need company. God is not lonely. He doesn't need you to entertain him. The people that God wants around, he wants those who love him because I already love you. Now, if you don't love me, you need to work that out, but I love you. So I should, I should never have to force or make or push you to connect, right? So, so the Bible says the first time you spiritually meet Jesus Christ is when you're baptized. Now remember, look at baptism, it's voluntary. Nobody can force you to get in. So if you notice, have you ever seen somebody get baptized head first? You ever notice that baptism ain't this way? <laughs> baptism is a, it's a letting go. And it's a trusting. And when you go down, the Bible says, when you voluntarily submit and you go down, the Bible says in verse uh, 3 and verse 4, therefore, we are buried. What? Look at the next word. That's the first time you meet Jesus Christ. That's the first time you meet Jesus Christ. The first time you meet Jesus Christ is when you are baptized. The first time you meet Jesus Christ is not when you pray. It is not when you sing. It is not when you take communion. It's not the first time you meet Jesus Christ is not when you cry or you have an experience. The first time you connect with Jesus Christ is when you are buried. Look at the text. I'm not making it up. You are buried with him. He meets you there in the place of obedience. And when he meets you there, you are buried with him. How, is, how are we buried with him, Brother Williams? The Bible tells you it's by what? By baptism. By baptism is how you connect with Jesus Christ. So I want to very quickly, I want to talk about that second part of the gospel. Now, what is the gospel? The first part is the death. That's the voluntary. You got to let go. One of the things that we realize about being a Christian, when you come to be a Christian, there's a, st there's a lot of stuff that you just got to, you got to let, you got to, you got to die to it. It used to be your life. It can't be your life anymore. You got to die to that. You got to mortify that kid. But the second part is burial, right? So uh, one of the things that you don't do when a person passes away, you don't embalm them and then sit them back on the couch. God, I don't know. I don't know if you knew that, but you don't. You you don't do that. Uh, if 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 you found out that a person passes away, then they say, you know what? We need to prepare for the. We need to prepare for the burial because anything that dies, it needs to be buried. It doesn't. Things that die doesn't need to stay amongst the land of the living. If there are some things that you say, you know, I ain't going to do that no more and I'm going to let that go. But you can't keep it in the house. You can't keep it in the environment. There's some friends that you let go, but they still around. You say, well, I ain't going to do that no more with y'all, but they still around. Anything that you have died to, you can't keep it around. 
That's some, that may be some friends that you just need to put a little dirt on and have your private ceremony. They say, well, I'm, it's over. I got to bury it. I can't go back there. You got to bury it. So the second part is, Brother Williams, what happens in burial? So the death part, the death part is why a lot of people don't want to come to Christ because they don't want to let that life go. They want to hold on to it and have Christ at the same time. You can't keep both lives. That's something you have to let go. Now, once you let go, letting go is not the end. You got to bury it. Because if you don't bury now, when you are buried, Jesus does something to you in the burial. You want to you wanna meet Christ. Are you paying attention? <laughs> you want to meet Christ. But when you connect with Christ, when you connect with Christ, uh, and don't be afraid, don't be afraid. Uh, <laughs> when you connect with Christ, he doesn't just want to connect with you. When you connect with Christ, when, when you connect with Christ, <laughs> There's something he want to get off of you. There's, there's something that he wants to separate. He sees you. He loves you. But when you're baptized, there's something he wants to, he wants to cut off. <laughs> Circles. There's something he wants to cut off. He doesn't want you to stay like you are. Now, this isn't physical. Because the scripture says what? And whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without what? So it's not physical. The only thing that's physical is the water. But it is a spiritual surgery that you're about to go through. Anybody ever had prep for surgery? And you say, yeah, I, I got surgery on Monday. I got, I got surgery coming up. Baptism is you scheduling your surgery. And somebody says, well, who's the doctor? The best doctor in the world is Jesus. And when, and when he comes, he wants to, in the burial, in, in the burial, he wants to, no, 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 don't look, keep straight. <laughs> in the burial, he wants to cut something off. He wants to, he wants to remove something off of you in the burial. Now, the gospel is the death and it's the what? Just because it died don't mean that it's off of you. So now he wants to remove it. He wants to remove it from you. The Bible says, in putting off the what? He is literally so if, 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 if he got baptized and came out, you would look and say, he looks the same. That's, that's what you would say, he would look the same. But spiritually, God doesn't look at him the same. The Bible says in baptism, God literally cuts off the whole body of sin. That's what the text says. He cuts off the body and he removes it in the baptism. Now, it's not made with hands, so don't get in the water trying to feel something physically because it's not physical. It's what? It's spiritual. But the Bible says when you got baptized and you got in the water, you had a body that I need to remove and only Jesus can remove it. You can't remove it off. You can't make yourself a better person. But what Jesus says is if you become obedient, I will cut away the ugly things that detest uh, God. When God looks at you, he says, I don't, I don't like that when I see sin all over you. And so what God does, what Jesus does, is he cuts away and removes the sinful body that you're in. Now, you still have your same mind. You still talk the same. You still the same height. You still got the same muscles, right? but spiritually, you don't look the same. Amen. Baptism is a spiritual surgery operation that is done by Jesus Christ, which is why we gotta go tell everybody about the gospel because the question that we ask people is, have you had surgery yet? 
Another way of saying that is, have you been baptized? Another way of saying that is, have you had your surgery? And then he says this, and putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the what? Verse 12, real quick, verse 12. Buried with him in what? Somebody says, well, when do you have the surgery? The surgery takes place in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him. Now, here's the beautiful thing about Jesus. When you get baptized, after he removes the body of sin, he don't just leave you to your own. He rises with you and starts walking with you. And he never leaves you after the surgery. He never leaves you after the surgery. The Bible says you are risen with him through the what? Through the faith. Notice what, notice what the King James Version uh, referred to in other translations. Uh, notice, through the faith of the operation of God who have raised him from the dead. Have you been operated on? Thank you. Thank you so much. Have you been operated on? He says there's something that needs to be cut off from you. In, in burial, there's some things that not only needs to die, but there's some things that need to be removed. As you meditate on your life, right? what needs to be removed? Sometimes, sometimes what we end up doing, we'll end up walking away from things that were toxic, and you give it a few months, and guess what we end up doing? Man, we go right back to the same people. We go right back to do the same things over again. But you were freed from it. If you, if you had your operation, for some of you, you can't go back to sugar like that no more. They cut that, they, 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 they freed you from the thing that was causing you to be sick. You can't go back to the same habits that brought you back in again. He said, listen, you free. Now all of this is by faith. You have to believe that Jesus will do these things for you and he'll cut them away and you will be free. He says, listen, if you want a flower, you got to have a seed. The flower is in the seed. But in order to get the flower out of the seed, what do you have to do? You got to bury it. Come on, church. It got to be buried. And you know what you got to do? You got to put some dirt on top of it. And you know what? That shell has to come off. The shell does not come off first and then you put it in the ground. You just killed the seed. What you have to do is you have to bury it and then you cover it and, and something happens in the ground that after a while, it, it loses its original shell, its body, it loses its first body. And when it loses its first body, then after a while, it comes back out. But when it comes back out, it doesn't come out the same way it went. Now, if you can understand a flower, you, should, you gotta understand the gospel. If you can understand a flower, then you, then you have to understand baptism. That it, it doesn't come out the same way it goes in. Now, somebody says, well, how does all that happen? You don't see what happens to the seed. Why? Because if you open, you mess up the process. It's really not for the naked eye. But you put it in there and you water it. And by faith, these things are removed and something beautiful is birthed out of it. That's what the gospel is. There is a flower. There is a beautiful flower in every person that walks these streets. Some of these people that walk these streets, they got bad attitudes, they're liars, they're cheaters, they're manipulators, they're, they're, back by, they're, they're, uh, they're dishonest, they're all kind of stuff. But inside of them, you know what God sees when he sees inside of them? There's a beautiful flower inside of each and every person. If we can only get them the gospel and they would be willing to come, if they would be willing to be buried and allow Jesus to operate on them, then something beautiful can arise if they would be willing to come. 
gospel is not complicated. You don't need a degree to understand it. Uh, you don't have to be perfect to receive it. You got to just be a believer and you got to be willing to accept that you're loved. That's the message that we go around to. You got to be willing. You are loved and Jesus wants you. And he has a plan to be with you forever, but you got to be willing to come. I'll operate. Jesus said, I'll operate. I'll do the work. You, you, guess what? We don't need, you don't even need Medicare. <laughs> the, the operation free. You don't, you don't need no insurance. You don't need to put no down payment on. It's all free. Jesus says, you just got to be willing to come. To heal, help and restore.